Hey YouTube, Zuki1 here. I feel a little weird using that name still. Driving a Toyota now and riding a Honda motorcycle. I might have to get into that in the future. In fact, some of you guys that actually know me know why I use that name. You'll understand. I might have to get into that. Anyways, today doing a little project video and uh, it's not my original idea. The credit goes to uh, another YouTuber by the name of Tacoma Holic. So go ahead and check his uh, channel out. He's got some really good information on the Tacomas, Toyota Tacomas. But uh, anyways, so I did recently purchase this uh, Toyota Tacoma, and I took it out on a shakedown last weekend. And I was reminded of the fact that in certain parts of the national forest, you are required to camp. You are required to have with you a shovel and a bucket. So, I thought, why not build a rack system? It seems to be pretty popular with these uh, Tacomas anyways. And I also wanted to utilize the bed rail system that these trucks come with. So, I thought, why not uh, throw back some ideas that I had when I built mine to kind of get back to the, to the community that gave me ideas to build it in the first place. So anyways, um, I think that's about it. Let's take a look at um, how I've got mine set up, and then I'll walk you through the parts and pieces and tools that I used, and uh, we'll go from there. All right, let's check it out. All right, so I know the, the full bed rails that span, or the bed rack systems are really popular, the ones that span the whole, the whole rear section of the bed. But right now, I'm not really interested in that. They cost a lot of money, and I don't know what direction I'm going with this truck. I am setting it up for uh, camping and doing longer trips, but I also want to use the bed of the truck, and I am going to be carrying my motorcycle in here. So for right now, I don't, I don't want to use the entirety of the bed. Basically, I just wanted um, a place to put a shovel, an axe, and maybe some other tools. So for me, I basically wanted something that mounted up against the front of the truck. And also I wanted to use stuff that I already had or that was easily accessible. So here's what I came up with. Basically just some flat bar, bolted using these T-nuts. You got some space here. The whole design, basically the whole system is designed so that nothing is rubbing metal contact on bed material because the composite bed, I didn't want metal rubbing into it and uh, basically destroying the bed. So the flat bar is kept away from the bed by these rubber hose pieces which are acting like a snubber and I kept the flat bar up away from the bed just enough so that it doesn't vibrate on the bed so that's pretty much it really simple design just a basically a piece of flat bar bolted a couple holes drilled in it to mount the quick fist and the only thing I had to order were the quick fists and the T-nuts, everything else I had laying around the shop. But if you don't have a uh, hardware store at hand, I will list basically everything you need in the description to put something similar to this together. All right, so let's go in the shop. I'll show you the tools and the parts that you need. We'll break it down piece by piece. Another quick note. Uh, these tools are pretty much placeholders. The shovel's out of my camper, and the axe is actually just on loan. So they're just placeholders. I plan on getting fiberglass handled tools so they don't get destroyed by sunlight. All right, so let's go inside and break this break this down real quick. One of the main advantages to this is how fast you can take it out of the bed. So when you're done doing your weekend warrior, you can convert it back to the daily commuter.
and installation is just as easy. Here's the basics of what you're going to need to put these together. Obviously, everybody can do their own thing, but I always advocate for safety. So, at the bare minimum, some safety glasses and a pair of gloves. Be working with sharp metal, especially if you're using power tools to do this. Enough said. I used a just a handsaw to cut the flat bar, and here's a file. I used a file to knock down the sharp edges. You can definitely use a grinder, whatever you've got at your disposal. But th those are basically the bare minimum. You're going to need a drill to drill the holes for the bolts and the mounting hardware, and a couple of drill bits. Uh, let's see, three eighths, a quarter inch, and a number nine or a three sixteenths bit. You can also if you've got some oil to help cool the bit, if you're if you're using thicker flat bar, that'll help prolong the life of your drill bits. You're gonna need some fasteners. I use some quarter twenty by one inch for actually mounting the quick fist. You're gonna need four of those, and I used four nylock nuts to secure those. You're also gonna need to mount the little rubber snubbers, um, some Tim thirty two by inch and a half uh, machine screws with four nuts. I, uh, I set it up like a jam nut or if you can get some nylocks then you can then you only need two nuts. You're also going to need two three-eighths nuts and two lock washers. If you're using standard threaded T-nuts. Now when I ordered these off of Amazon I noticed that there were several different makes of these from several, several different manufacturers and depending on which ones you order, that will determine what fasteners you use to mount the actual uh, bracket. Some of these are threaded metric, I think, and some of them are, are threaded standard. I think some people were complaining that they weren't threaded properly. They were trying to put metric in standard threaded T-nuts. These were marked for the Toyota Tacoma but they are threaded standard, these particular ones. So just be aware of that when you order these. Little gray area there. In any case, okay, moving along. You're gonna need two of these tool mount, quick fist tool mount kits. Um, quick note on that. These are about seven or eight dollars per kit. You get two mounts in each kit. They do make a 10 a multi mount kit, which comes with 10 mounts. It comes with four of these larger mounts and then several others and it's only about four dollars more than this. Had I known that I would have bought that kit because I do plan on mounting more equipment in the future. Um, in the long run I think it'll save you a couple bucks. I think it's twenty dollars for that kit. So um, anyways you might want to look at that. I, I didn't actually notice that until after I would already ordered this. So but if you just want this and nothing else then anyways. And you're going to need uh, some hand tools, just the basic stuff that you need to tighten your fasteners. And then some paint and something to clean your brackets just to get the grease and, and grime off of there before you put your paint on. Otherwise your paint's not going to stick very well. Um, I used a good quality high solids paint. Uh, anything will work, but the better the paint you use, the longer it's going to last the longer it's going to resist fading. So, and basically just a rag to, you know, clean clean your surface up before you paint it. I used alcohol, you can use brake clean. Um, basically whatever whatever you want to use that doesn't leave a residue behind. So yeah, that's pretty much it. So let's take a look at the finished product and I'll walk you through how I made it. Really simple. Okay, so this is basically the the bracket, there's two of these, as you saw earlier, and this is essentially just a uh, piece of quarter inch by two inch flat bar, and we've got our three eighths hole drilled here, and it is basically a half inch down. These are rough measurements, guys. Like I said in the beginning, I placed it in the bed of the truck, and the most important thing was holding it up and having clearance at the bottom so that the bottom of the bracket wasn't um, going to be rubbing into the bed. Okay, But 
these measurements I'm just showing you this for uh, just for reference okay because every tool that you mount on here that your each specific shovel and axe and tool combo is going to determine the actual distance that they that they set how what spread you have okay so these are the quarter inch by one inch um, machine screws that are holding these on and then these are the plastic washers that come with the quick fist now I did have to drill those out they come with a number 10 hole in there and I drill them out to quarter inch just to help support and then on the back side just got some nylocks on there on there and then down here at the bottom is our hose that's acting as a standoff to keep the bottom from rubbing against the bed and that's pretty much it so basically you cut this, I cut it to 17 and a quarter then I drilled this hole then I mounted it in the bed then I set my tools on there roughly dry fitting them and got the measurements for the height of my tools then I drilled these holes out drilled this hole out built the little snubbers these are about oh inch and an eighth inch and a quarter just drilled one side of this of the hose and popped the machine screw through it and because I didn't have nylocks on hand I just put two nuts on there to, to act as a lock, lock nut dry fit everything made sure it was going to work when I was happy with it, I took it all apart, cleaned it, painted it, and reassembled it. Finished product. All right now, you guys have seen me do most of this in my my little workshop here and it's nothing special but it is a workshop but for those of you that don't have a workshop don't that let that deter you from doing small projects like this because if you're going to be doing any kind of off-roading or overlanding or whatever you want to call it um, you should be able to do uh, a certain amount of recovery or work from your vehicle you should definitely set your vehicle up to to be somewhat self-sufficient and especially for you, those of you that have um, a Toyota Tacoma, basically already set up with your own power supply. So there's absolutely no reason why you can't do this right off the back end of your truck.